This here is the updated Golf R. What to expect? What's new? Let's find out together. I'm Thomas. This is Auto Gefühl in 4K, full screen, full length. Let's go. With the updated front gets the illuminated VW logo like the rest of the Golf facelift, but of course specific things also for the R. First of all, there's this blue stripe here that fits very well also to the lapis blue color, one of my favorite colors at VW definitely. And the lamps would be standard, the LED plus lamps already. And an option, you can also get the IQ light, the ones you can see here. These are the matrix LED lamps. Then you also have cascading turning indicators, both in the front and also in the rear. And then a very strong styling for the R in the lower part. New bumper, horizontal stress here. And you can see also how the vehicle color goes then right in here. The DCC dynamic chassis control, the adaptive suspension is now standard also for the Golf R. At the same time, VW promises that although there's more standard equipment, they will go lower in the price. So um, yeah, that's a very interesting thing. We don't hear that that often in the automotive industry. Here, the DCC is, by the way, also 20 millimeters lower than the standard Golf suspension. And under the hood, there are also new updates. Let me open that directly for you because you now get a 13 horsepower upgrade now at 333 horsepower from this two liter four cylinder turbo petrol engine. And yeah, well, there are no hydraulic struts or no gas struts available under the hood. That's sad here. However, yeah, the engine definitely does the job. Not only via the front axle like the GTI, but the Golf R also comes standard with all wheel drive, maximum 50 50 distribution. And even more interesting is that. On the rear, you get a torque split or a torque vectoring. That means that the curved outer wheel can get more torque than the curved inner wheel and kind of like puts the car better out of the corner. There's even a drift mode available with the performance pack. Then you get the Nürburgring special mode and the drift mode. And then you can, although it's basically a front wheel driven platform, you can still do some nice drifting action with a Golf R. And this here is the rear torque split. So the power comes here from the front, from the engine to the rear wheels. And then you can see at the moment, both are turning in the same speed. And here, this is a cutaway model. These are the two clutches. And when one of them is closed, then just the power would be sent to this one. And of course, you can make it on demand that this is maybe a little bit more closed than this one. And then you can distribute it from left to right or right to left. Suspension settings, we also go through on the interior. Nice, always the contrast here in silver here with the bright mirror caps, our logo. You know, not a while ago, they've updated the whole logo scheme. And also wheel update, 18 inch would be standard, optional 19 inch, and optional, optional, 19 inch forged wheels. The one you can see right here, these are the new forged wheels. Very cool design. Of course, better performance brakes are also with the Golf R equipped always as standard. And these forged wheels actually lower the undamped mass by 20% for, as for the wheels, so 20% lighter as for the wheels. So yeah, I mean, on the race track you will surely feel that. On day-to-day -day driving, probably not that much. Towards the rear, you can see when you have the IQ light, you also have these three-dimensional tail lamps in this layer design. And once again, also very cool cascading turning indicators. Then high gloss black in the lower part, diffuser really large. And then you optionally have the Akrapovic exhaust for pipes, really massive, and also with the respective sound. There's even a special startup available. So there's a trick. Sh shall we try that out maybe? I, I, can, I can show it to you. So there's this special trick that when you hit this, the start-stop button for one and a half second before pressing the brake, then actually the car starts up in a more emotional way. Let's, let's try that out. Sorry. Uh, Oh, that's what off. And so now we hold before and then I hit the brake. Ah, there we go. Nice, isn't it? <laughs> and this is here the Golf R Black Edition where everything is blacked out as a special model inside of the headlamps, for example. Also the logo, if it's not illuminated at the moment, I'll soon turn it off and you can also see how it looks like blacked out. 
and also even further these forged wheels 19 inch they are also here, all the way in black you can also see how slim they are how much you can see of the brake this is by the way also increasing the cooling effect so on the Nürburgring Nordschleife test they could run more laps without the brakes getting hot because the wheel just leaves more air to it. And you can also see it here on the rear. So everything then for the most sinister look, continuing also here at the rear tail lamps. And then as well in the lower part, this is the non aerobic exhaust, the standard exhaust for the Golf R, in this case, and also then with black rings around in this black edition. And the rear logo also then here with this, not black all the way, but then the dark gray. And the logo here, when it's not illuminated, you can see how it's blacked out. So what do you think about the exhaust sound here with the Akrapovich exhaust? It's of course always way better than with the standard exhaust. Also performance-wise better. Acceleration figures to 1 km an hour, 62 miles an hour, now at 4.6 seconds here for the hatch, or 4.8 seconds for the variant for the estate. That's 0.1 seconds quicker each, and also top speed either 250 kilometers an hour, 155 miles per hour, or you can unlock it with the performance pack to 270 kilometers an hour, so around 170 miles per hour. And also sound-wise, not only from the exhaust, but also I always like the closing sounds of the doors. That's like a quality sign has always been for the Golf. Also the rear doors and the front. Yeah, I really love that. So that is very well done. Inside of the doors, somewhat soft touch here, also with the structure, then real carbon fiber decal element you can get. And a nice gray microfiber is a very good contrast. And I also like that the inside door pockets are covered in fabric. Let me uh, show that to you in detail and here we give you a little bit more light. Right there you can see it's also then a fabric covering. Then the interior also has some special features. First of all, unlike the GTI, which has real buttons on the steering wheel, you have, you have, yeah, you have hash, <laughs> hashtag capacitive BS buttons here, left and right. So they are kind of tuned by software. That's very interesting here for the cruise control, right, that then right side for the instruments. Mm -hmm. But what they have changed now by software also is here the R button where you change the driving modes cannot be pressed that easily because before the things, thing was that sometimes people slipped from the steering wheel and then changed the driving modes on the right side, activate, deactivate the uh, steering wheel heating and now it's kind of like you need more force to, pr to press it that unintentional presses are happening less often. The seats are basically my favorite about this vehicle. Nice sport seats here, fabric on the inside, microfiber on the top in gray and stitched logo, this is beautiful with the integrated head restraints and they not only look sporty, indeed they also are very comfortable even for tall persons. So um, the sport seats in the GTI and the Golf R, my favorite about the Golf actually, it's really cool and with 189, 6 for 2 I still have enough headroom left. This one is also equipped here with a small panoramic roof, manual shade then, but I think it's the, these manual shades are actually perfectly fine because it goes so quickly and it's actually um, good from the operation and then you can also leave some air in if you like like this and then are also more updates from the cockpit first of all just from the steering wheel you have these upgraded shifting panels here they are larger so they're easier to control then and here we go with the cockpit soft touch here on the top dashboard then we have a nice ambient lighting integration above this real carbon fiber here at the moment golf are specific blue but you can also switch that you can um, also put it here to red for example or to yellow pick this light design but the blue obviously is very fitting for the Golf R. Then always 13 inch infotainment system now, always this biggest size for the Golf. The illuminated sliders in the lower part for the climate unit but you can also do it in the screen if you like and new infotainment also software upgrade it's quicker than before you have a good overview like in the new ID models and this always stays on top that you can easily activate or deactivate some of the assistance systems like this speed warning for example and driving modes here with the performance pack you also have a drift mode you, can, you have to activate it then here or the special mode Nürburgring soft suspension everything else then on the sporty side and individual mode you can fine-tune the DCC also like from plus to minus so you can make your individual settings so that's actually quite decent and they have also worked on the instruments, so um, different visualizations are possible. You also have a lap timer for that then now. And the middle console, you have the cup holders right here. They are also adaptive, like this. 
Then DSG, always the dual clutch transmission, that is standard and it has this, like, this integration here and in the front you have the illumination here with the Golf and underneath is an inductive charging pad for your smartphone. It's also cooled, very important that your smartphone does not overheat. And then this armrest here can be also slid forward, blue contour stitches, some more space on the inside. And you can also get this optional head-up display. Rear seats, hard pack on the top here, then we have a nice grey microfiber once again and also the fabric covering on the inside. Well, there's not much space left here for my knees actually when I'm also driving. That's the thing because the Golf doesn't have much space on the rear seat. It's okay when you spread your legs a little bit somewhat in the variant. The Golf R variant is also available. There you would have more leg room. Headroom, however, is totally fine. And we have nice fabric here in the blue structure, also on the rear end, and these microfiber inserts on the sides. USB-C charging we have here then in the lower part. Let me give you some light. There we have the USB-C chargers, maybe for the kids and so on. Yeah, there's this middle tunnel here. So um, the fifth person that is, um, yeah, maybe somewhat limited. Of course, you could move this seat here a little bit more forward, but um, yeah, it's kind of cramped in the fifth seat here. You have to know that. Then we can fold the logo again to open the hatch. That's always a cool thing. Then the length here is about 76 centimeters, 30 inches. The width about a meter, 40 inches. And you can see one third, two thirds split or the ski hatch here like this. I can also reach over then for the maximum. And um, yeah, here in the hatch to the front seats as I would be driving is about 150 in meters or 59 inches. That is of course then even better in the variant, the estate. Towing is now at 1.9 ton, by the way, for the Golf R. And if you have any questions left, ChatGPT has been integrated in the infotainment system, you, so you can talk to the AI also while driving. My favorite feature is definitely the seats for today. Yeah, and the power upgrade, of course, cannot hurt either. Would you go for the hatch or for the estate for the variant? Tell me in the comments and also tune in to more golf content here on Autogafu.